Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Cost to the nation estimated to be between £200 million pounds and, wait for it, £2 billion. So, <laughs> absolutely no idea of how much it costs. But nonetheless, it's your invitation today to get enraged about immigration and foreigners. We'll be examining why that works still so well even in the context of the madness that we have inflicted upon ourselves since June of 2016. Speaking of which, genuine question for you. Dominic Raab today is saying that if we crash out of the European Union on WTO terms on October the 31st, something which I think it's fair to say many people who, for astonishing reasons, admire Dominic Raab or see themselves on the same side of Brexit as Dominic Raab, they have been telling me now for a while they really want to crash out on WTO terms. It's what they want. So why is Raab today saying that it would be the EU's choice? It's like he's blaming them for a no-deal Brexit. But I thought all these people wanted a no-deal. You can't blame someone for something good. You don't blame someone for giving you a present or for buying you a drink. Oh, well, I blame, I blame the bloke. Do you see what I mean? Why is he using this sort of language today? The language, well, if, it, if we crash out with that deal, it will be the EU's choice. Because that makes it sound undesirable. And it sounds as if Dominic Raab is trying to park the responsibility for the ludicrous weapons-grade ignorance of him and his cronies upon the European Union, who successfully negotiated a treaty which the British Prime Minister approved. Do you see how just how mad things are getting now? And still they spout. Boris Johnson has just appointed Ian Duncan Smith to run his campaign. Ian Duncan Smith, widely regarded as uh, possibly the worst Conservative leader in modern times, but of course a man who became Conservative leader on the back of a CV that turned out to be full of fibs and fabrications. Now, if there's one area of political performance in which Boris Johnson doesn't need any help at all, surely that area would be fibs and fabrication. So why has he hired someone known chiefly for his ability to fib and fabricate on his own CV? I don't know. We might have a look at that as well. I do know that um, Mr Johnson said uh, in 2013 something which I think you might find pertinent to yesterday's events. Uh, there's a, there were two astonishingly embarrassing interviews for Mr. Johnson yesterday, only, only one of which occurred in this studio. Seriously, I, Boris Johnson car crashes are like buses, aren't they? You wait years for one to come along, and then, then two come along at the same time. But the other one, um, the one in which he spoke about buses, actually really interested me because of what he said in 2013 about what you do when things aren't going so well. I'm going to read it to you in its entirety, and then we'll get stuck into the conversation about so-called health tourism. This is Boris Johnson in 2013. Are you paying attention at the back? Wake up. Let us suppose you are losing an argument. The facts are overwhelmingly against you. And the more people focus on the reality, the worse it is for you and your case. Your best bet in these circumstances is to perform a manoeuvre that a great campaigner describes as throwing a dead cat on the table, mate. That is because there is one thing that is absolutely certain about throwing a dead cat on the dining room table. And I don't mean that people will be outraged, alarmed, disgusted. That is true, but irrelevant. The key point, says my Australian friend, it's probably Linton Crosby. Uh, the key point, says my Australian friend, is that everyone will shout, Geez, mate, there's a dead cat on the table. That is the last time I will do an Australian accent this morning. And don't send me text saying it wasn't an Australian accent, it was South African or Welsh or something else. That's missing the point. Jeez, mate, there's a dead kid on the table. Uh, in other words, they will be talking about the dead cat, the thing you want them to talk about, and they will not be talking about the issue that has been causing you so much grief. Boris Johnson, 2013. Boris Johnson yesterday somehow managed to... And not, not overshadow, but certainly to distract attention from his appalling interview with Nick Ferrari, in which it emerged almost certainly that the photograph of him with his alleged girlfriend now, I'm afraid we have to say, Carrie Simons, that appeared in, in newspapers and had allegedly been provided to said newspapers by people close to Boris Johnson, it, almost, almost certain that that was taken weeks before the altercation at her flat that saw Boris Johnson 
um, come to the police's attention. So distracting attention from that. More pertinently, perhaps, for people who prefer their politics pure rather than riddled with personality defects. Withdrawing attention from the fact that he has not explained and probably won't be able to steer the ludicrous kamikaze Brexit that he's now pretending to favour through our sovereign parliament. Those are the two things that we should have been talking about yesterday. And I appreciate that most of you don't spend your life glued to social media, but if you did spend most of yesterday immersed in the political ends of social media, you'd have seen a claim that he likes to relax by making models of buses out of cardboard boxes, drawing a lot more attention than either the absence of any policy or explanation or plan with regard to a kamikaze Brexit, or the fact that he appears to have colluded in the deception of the British public by allowing a photograph designed to suggest that there'd been a rapprochement and a reconciliation between him and the girlfriend who screamed, get off me, at him shortly before the police arrived at her flat at the end of last week. Said photograph had in fact been taken several weeks previously. But I know, I know, a lot of you like being lied to, and I don't know, I don't know what to do about that. Nine minutes after ten is the time, so we may return to that issue. I, we should do, I feel. We should spend some time this morning refusing to look at the dead cat and looking instead at the things that the dead cat was de de designed to distract us from. But I don't know, I, I feel we might have had our fill of Johnson for, for 24 hours or so. A surfeit of Johnsons, one might say. A surfeit of Johnson. The others seem okay. The siblings seem charming. And, and that Dominic Raab line about something that his supporters have been telling me for months is brilliant and desirable and what they voted for all along is now being described by one of their cheerleaders as something that will only happen if the EU makers do it. How can, how can you be blaming something beneficial on anyone? You don't blame people for good things. You only blame people for bad things. So why is Dominic Raab today? And that line is the one I told you a while ago, this is, it would come to this. I'm back, I think, in the zone of seeing my predictions come true because we're edging ever closer to reality. The area in which you can't make decent predictions is the area where uh, reality is still being denied. You can't make any predictions about just how far they will go in their denial of reality. But just watch Liam Fox at the moment. Liam Fox, almost a byword for Brexit ignorance, and, or, or at least for uh, excessive optimism in the context of the easiest deal in human history, etc. Liam Fox has just published a paper explaining why claims by his fellow Brexiters that Article 24, Paragraph 5 of the General Agreement on Trade and Tariffs, the, uh, uh, the document that preceded the World Trade Organization, would somehow allow us to carry on just as we are, is a load of piffle, an inverted pyramid of piffle, as Boris Johnson might have said in more cheerful times. Now just bear all that in mind. And now tell me whether or not you think doctors should be immigration enforcement officers. 0345 606 0973. The Daily Mail has a new editor, but I'm afraid it's back to singing the same old song this morning, and it is uh, a front page designed to make you uh, angry with both the doctors and the nurses that you will turn to in your hours of most dire need, and any patients in the waiting room with you who look as if they might possibly not be able to trace their family's origins back to the doomsday book or beyond. Because, as you well know, all of the problems that this country is currently facing are caused by... Doctors, nurses and people who can't immediately trace their family's origins back to the Doomsday Book or, or beyond. Absolutely clear. It's got nothing to do with the last editor of the Daily Mail or, or God forbid, half of the editorial floor that's still there. That's got no, no impact whatsoever upon the unprecedented chaos and absurdity that our country is currently engulfed in. It's all the fault of foreigners! And we're back in business. Two stories in the newspapers today that, that almost um, make you nostalgic for the days before Brexit broke everything. There's an attack upon people on benefits who uh, dare to have more than two children, and there is an attack upon people who are ill and foreign. Now, let's be clear about one thing. There is nothing particularly unreasonable about suggesting that people who haven't paid into a system should pay into said system if they seek to avail themselves of the benefits that that system arrives, uh, delivers. And that is the government policy. That's, that's the point. This, you have to read quite far into the story today to, to register that this vote by the BMA doesn't actually change anything. They don't want the fees to be in place in their current form. I don't know enough about the various speeches and positions arrived at by members of the British Medical Association to know whether they would be more comfortable with 
fees being charged to foreign nationals if they didn't have to do the job themselves. And, and this, I fear, is the real point of the story. And I fear doubly that it will be either deliberately or accidentally missed by the massive majority of commentators and consumers. It's the same with the landlords, I think. I could be wrong. 03456060973 is a number you need to keep by your phone in case I say something that's not true or I make a mistake. You must pick me up on it immediately. Because it seems to me that the complaint the BMA is making is chiefly one about enforcement rather than the principle of the test. It's, it's that they don't understand why it should be their job. So you turn up at hospital... With, with, you know, with, with your arm dangling from its socket. And the doctors and the nurses there don't want to have to establish your immigration status before they decide whether or not they're going to treat you. That, that seems to me to be what's wrong with this, in the same way that they tried to pass it on to landlords. So what happens, and this is a theory, okay, this is a theory, 0345 6060 The theory is this, public opinion is fermented and fostered by the media, right? Public opinion, as we know, prior to Brexit, was virulently anti-immigration. It's actually calmed down a hell of a lot since, because whether or not the newspapers had a little look at what they'd done and went, whoa, crikey, we were only supposed to blow the bloody doors off, not actually bury the entire country under a tidal weight of xenophobic filth. So they looked at it and they took their foot off the pedal, because immigration at the moment, for most voters, is nowhere near the concern that it was prior to June of 2016. Weird, that, isn't it? But it's not an opinion. That's a matter of fact. That's counting. But it is public opinion, and it's very easily whipped up. So they whip up public opinion to the point where the public demand that something must be done, but the politicians actually know the truth, which is always more nuanced and more complicated than public opinion, when whipped up by the media, will allow. So they then announce things designed to address immigration, while I suspect, and this morning I suggest, knowing full well that it's a, either a ridiculous or an unworkable response. Think of Theresa May's go-home vans. They would have delighted every racist in the country, but they would have achieved almost nothing. It's like she threw a bone to the former editor of the Daily Mail, Paul Dacre, and left him to happily chomp away on it while she tried to get on with the business of running the home office. Go-home vans. Ridiculous. Uh, absolutely ridiculous idea. But presumably, chomping racists loved it, right? The same with, oh, landlords are going to have to check the immigration status of tenants. What? Landlords? You can't, you can't even get hold of them. When your carpets need cleaning, they're hardly going to step up to the plate and start operating like immigration enforcement office. It doesn't matter. It looks good on the front page of a newspaper. And I suspect the same is true here. The BMA is accused of, quote, inviting the whole world in, as it calls for foreign patient fees to be axed. You don't even need to turn the page to know that they will have found the most egregious example of, oh, here it is, a woman had quintuplets and it cost the NHS £145,000. Are you furious yet? wouldn't be in the news if it wasn't exceptional. If it happened every day, it would be dog bites man. But it doesn't, so it's man bites dog. But don't focus on the facts. Just focus on the fury. And I suspect it still works. It's 10.17. Your thoughts, please, on 03456060973. The facts don't matter. Only the fear and the fury. And few things provoke more fear and fury in modern Britain than immigration. So if I tell you that a bunch of filthy foreigners are getting treated for free on the NHS and your taxes are paying for it, you will, if you've turned off your brain and you have fallen under my spell, you will get both fearful and furious. But what are the facts? Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. My suggestion is this morning that the facts are pretty much contained within this line here. The exact cost is put between two hundred million pounds and two billion pounds a year. They haven't got a scooby doo about the scale of the problem. And I suspect it would cost a hell of a lot more money to do this properly than it would actually save. To check the status, the residency status of every single person to cross the threshold of an NHS NHS hospital. You get A&E and GP services for free, whatever the weather. 
But to do that would cost more than it could possibly save. It's the same reason why we don't have rules about EU citizens that can currently come here without enough money or without an offer of work in place and stay for more than three months. If we wanted to, we could round them up and chuck them out. Why don't we? Because the problem isn't big enough to justify the cost. But facts during immigration debates matter almost as little as they do during Boris Johnson pronouncements. Michael is in Southampton, hopefully to, to put me right. Michael, what would you like to say? Yeah, I think you're right in that a lot of this is about the politics because, first of all, um, we have a system in place to charge every country that does holiday dialysis, and that's hundreds of, of uh, well, about 180 countries last time I looked. Um, and that's and an established that is, scheme, is it? I didn't know that. So well, that Because yeah, you, so what, you know you're so going to need dialysis if you're travelling to another country. Well, yeah, if you come from Dubai and you want to come to England, you've got to plan when you're going to get your dialysis. And Absolutely, there's a, like a, you do. Like a, a directory of all the hospitals that have a, a renal unit. Yes. And we cross-charge back. Now, we don't want to be checking people at, at uh, immigration. Where you check is is actually in the GP surgery because we t we treat people with an NHS number. Okay, and you get your NHS number from a GP. Yes. My daughter went to um, her, she wanted to re-register some treatment um, while she's on holiday from uni, and they already asked her for her ID, even though she was registered with them for six years previously, um, just to register for the summer because she can't be registered with two. Um, they insist on having her ID now so they already are um, sort of looking into this you know it's sort of a, what do you a, a feel about entitled. it sorry what do you think uh, of it what do you feel about it I, I don't want to sound rude but I, 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 I want to get to the political issue in the discussion rather than necessarily the, yeah, the, the, the finer detail the of individual me, the children's issue, experiences you're exactly right go on that they, that they you know they're telling people what they want to hear but there's That's nothing fundamentally wrong in suggesting that people who haven't paid into the system pay for the services or the treatment they receive. For me, as a facts-based human being, the question immediately becomes, well, how big is the problem? Because if you're taking a sledgehammer to crack a nut, that's bad news for everybody. But if it's, if it's a whopping great problem, then maybe there is a cause for concern and a well, need for, for action. The truth of it is, first of all, that uh, we, don't, we don't collect that data. Secondly... Um, we don't, um, it is various hospitals, hospitals. So clearly inner city hospitals would have, you know, a bigger quote unquote, it's not really a problem, but you know, let's call it a problem because that's what the politicians want to call it. Um, and by calling it a problem, if you solve it or say you've done something or start collecting stats, um, then you can say you're effective. And, and this doesn't even, this story today, and again, I, 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 it falls upon me to, to be the person that pricks the balloons of, fabrication and exaggeration, it doesn't actually change anything. This is just the BMA agreeing to lobby the government to change the law, that the government doesn't have to change. The government, ma the government makes the law. But, but the reasons for objecting to this proposal seem to be that it, 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 it either constitutes a massive overreaction to a, to a relatively small problem, or it, 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 it is actually doing harm, because it fosters this suspicion of foreigners, it fosters xenophobia, it's the reason why in waiting rooms we have now almost all of us that spent a lot of time in hospitals recently, we've witnessed people commenting upon the ethnicity, not just of the people alongside them in the waiting room, but of the nurses and the doctors coming to treat them as well. Yes, but if you had a system in place, so let's say you had an insurance checking system in your in your travel document, so it was checked as the same way as you check a visa. Um, no, you know, show me your insurance certificate. You know, you book it at the same time. It it pushes the problem away from costing government anything to enforce, to rather than uh, you know to, to to travel agent, you know, the the person at the desk in the. But that would be like the EHIC card. That would be like the European Health Insurance card, but well, but, but on a on a bigger for, scale. For them, except for. Well, it in will Spain, be after October the 31st, mate. Well, in Spain, I got treated um, there, and they just wanted to make sure I wasn't a resident. Yes. All. No, and, um, and, and, and if you are, then the rules are slightly different. If you're not, then the NHS will pick up your bills. And, and our bureaucracy is, I'm told, notoriously poor at assessing and, and, and recording and processing this information. Why? Well, think about it. Hospitals are meant to employ officers to collect bills, but not all do, and others have only one or two staff to check thousands of patients. So how long before the Daily Mail whips up your fury and your fear by saying that the reason this old lady died 
on a hospital trolley in a corridor was because the hospital spends so much money checking the immigration status of the patients that they can't afford to pay for beds and doctors. It's just mad now. It's, it's, the, 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 it's like a snake eating its own tail, British media, and its relationship with immigration. But there we are. Thank God we're here. Terry is in Woking. Terry, what would you like to say? Morning, James. Hello, Terry. Um, this is regarding my wife's grandmother. She's a UK citizen, has worked a whole life um, within the UK. Uh, a few years ago, I think six or seven, she moved to Turkey on her state pension. And and then she's no not Then she's not a resident anymore, is she? So she can't prove she's lived here for six months, so she'd probably get charged, if I've understood these rules so correctly. That's, that's exactly what happened. She came here for her brother's funeral. Within 24 hours of landing, she suffered a major stroke. Oh, I'm sorry. And was rushed, rushed to hospital. She's doing a lot better now. Good. Um, within, I think, 24 hours, 48 hours, questions are being raised as to her, her permanent address, residency, GP. We obviously didn't have that. And, then, and, and this um, isn't health tourism, of course, because it's not as if she was ill in Turkey and decided to come here to get free treatment, but she's going to get caught up in this net. It's, gonna, it's not going to do the thing it's designed to do, and it's going to add to your wife's grandmother's burdens and, and, and fears yeah. and worries. She's got a £20,000 bill that she's no. now... Been, yeah. Um, and people were coming around within a few days asking her to sign stuff, just after a stroke. Yeah. And then my wife went there and we sort of said, she doesn't sign anything because we don't know what capacity she's got, where she is. She's My, my wife was her proxy, sort of, yes. to, to sign the forms. But as far as they were concerned, no, 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 she can sign this, she can do this. And we're now getting the bills come through oh, mate. to say that um, over 20,000. And that's uh, someone who's worked a whole life in the UK to do, um, just to come over well, to a public is, funeral. Yeah, I, I mean, whether you like it or not, this is because the rules are about residency. Mm -hmm. And, and the yeah. six-month limit, if you've been here for six months, you, you qualify for NHS treatment as a resident of, of the United Kingdom if you've left the country for six... I mean, obviously, I'm not making a point here. It's just a point of fact, not politics. Mm -hmm. But if she'd been in a European Union country, as opposed to Turkey, you wouldn't have got a bill. No, and if she'd got it, if it happened in December rather than January, I don't think she'd have been charged, if I've understood the, the paperwork correctly. It's the fact that it changed within, within the last few months. I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm happy to take more input from people who, who are across the facts or have experiences like yours. How, can I ask you a personal question? Do you mind? Mm -hmm. no, how, go ahead. How, how do you historically respond to front pages like um, BMA accused of inviting the whole world in as it calls for foreign patient fees to be axed? How, how, do, does it um, inflame your feelings? Uh, to, be, to be honest, my the opinions probably changed over the last years. Um, yes. I probably once would have been sucked into that as an easy headline. But as time goes on, people come over, they need treatment. Treat the people, you, you know? Why are you trying to um, scratch around for pennies when the, the vast um, income of the NHS is far greater than anything they're going to get back? Yes, and, and of course the collateral damage is done to, to potentially to people like your grandmother. Some texts that came in, I don't know why they're still on my desk, but they came in while Nick was discussing this. Um, I'll read a couple out. So, Sarah, and what I find astonishing about this is that these have people's mobile phone numbers on them. I don't care if they're dying on the floor. If they can't pay for treatment, they should not receive the service. Um, inevitably, a couple of people saying take the money from the bloated foreign aid budget. <sighs> And uh, the clue is in the name. Oh, please, God, no one's actually still punting this Farage-flavoured nonsense. It's, it's our National Health Service, not the International Health Service. Half past ten is the time. Groundhog Day is the date. As a nurse, my primary duty of care is to patients. I am a nurse, not an immigration officer. We treat the person, not the passport, and the government needs to listen to healthcare professionals. Our workload is overwhelming as it is, says... Dan Gooding, um, a position that not all doctors and nurses agree with, but a significant majority of the British Medical Association did, which is why they voted to stop billing uh, foreign patients for NHS care, as, as in people who can't demonstrate their residency over six months, um, under the current system, under the current rules. And, and I just think it's a really good example of how this toxic environment that we live in, and it's far from unique to the United Kingdom, but this, this fear of the other, this, this whisper in your ear that somebody foreign is trying to nick your money or your life or, or, or challenge your values or your culture, it is yet another example of somebody shouting fire in a crowded room and half the room runs for the door. Even 
if it runs a risk of stamp dying in a stampede, you let and the other half go and check if there's a fire or not. This is a program for people that like to check whether there's a fire or not. And usually there isn't. But of course that doesn't mean there never will be. And it's very important to recognise these facts. It may well be that I'm, I'm, I'm misunderstanding this story, in which case share the facts with me. 0345 973 But the question is this. Is this an effective response to public opinion? Because there's a fascinating quote, and, and you know this already, but what happens on a story like this is the journalists responsible have a list of MPs that they know will give them a quote. They just give them the barest bones of the story. It's about health tourism. Uh, you, the, the BMA want to, want to encourage it. Could you give us a quote, please? And then you get one here. Uh, Conservative MP Philip Hollowbone. The BMA is completely out of touch with public opinion on this issue. And public opinion on this issue. I don't care what public opinion is. I care what public knowledge is. Public opinion is worthless if it's false, if it's fact-free, if it's Brexit-flavoured. What's the facts? Because public opinion informed by anything other than facts is hollow, but not in Brexit Britain. Uh, let's find us another one. Who are you going to ring? We need to get a quote. Someone called Andrew Percy. Crikey, never heard of him. It is incredible that some doctors want to open up the NHS to health tourism from people overseas who haven't paid in. Perhaps instead, doctors who support this could pay for the treatment of these people themselves. Two Conservative MPs there, tattooing Wazak across their forehead on page four of the Daily Mail. And, and I know a lot of people listening to this programme will fall for it. And that's fine. My beef is not with you. My beef is with the people shouting fire. Because there isn't one. Kerry's in Oxford. Kerry, what would you like to say? Yeah, I just wanted to tell you a story which I think explains why um, I think it's a really bad idea. Mm. Um, so we went on holiday to Italy camping and my five-year-old fell at a playground and bumped his head. Oh dear. Uh, start, started being sick and um, he was rushed by ambulance to an Italian hospital. And within one minute of arriving, I was taken off to a side room away from my child, and he was left alone with a doctor that didn't speak English. Oh, um, basically, because they wanted to check my paperwork to check that we had insurance that could cover the treatment before they treat him. Um, and he was incredibly scared, and no one could understand him. And it was just a really oh, awful. That's awful. Experience that does sound awful. I don't, I don't know if that would be common. And if you had, did you have an EHIC card with you? Did you have a European Health Insurance card with you? We did, but they wanted to see it and to take down the details and the paperwork. Yeah, it took about twenty minutes before I could get back to him. And your little boy um, was, was on his own in a in a room full of people speaking Italian. It, it was, um, yeah, a really unpleasant experience, and I just wanted to kind of highlight that as I, an example of why I'm glad it's you a have. really bad idea. And at risk of at risk of sounding like Andrea Ledsom, as a father, I, I, I completely understand your feelings and 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 indeed why it resonates with me. And it's not health tourism because it's an accident. It's uh, you know it's, it's not a pre-existing condition as I think insurance companies and right-wing Americans call it. the The problem is though that money is being spent on treating him. It's not wrong or racist or or, or, or backwards to suggest that they need to find out where the money for treating this lad is going to come from. So, is there an argument for saying they could have made these inquiries in a different way? I mean, I, you know, or, or would you the rather they the just... Paperwork. Yeah, go on. I understand the paperwork has to happen, um, you know, but it did not need to happen as the first thing that, you know, as we arrived at the hospital, you know, it could have happened much further down the line, but by putting the need to check and the paperwork ahead of sort of healthcare and compassion... Um, well, that's know, how doctors that, and nurses feel. I, I guess for me it's a question of scale, isn't it? Is it if there were 5,000 five-year-old boys with suspected concussion queuing up outside and no way of establishing who was going to pay for it, then you could understand why they had to do... Well, they did, but but by nature of A and E, accident and emergency, they are exceptional circumstances. Yeah, so, absolutely. So, so you just yes, and it does. It feels almost as if the Hippocratic Oath is being compromised. And was he all right? Sorry, Kerry, I should have asked that sooner. Yeah, he was absolutely fine. He had a concussion, and they kept him for twenty-four hours and observed. Um, did he have an? Yeah, did he have a cool scar? 
he had a little scar. Oh, um, it was mainly he was being sick. So I think that's why they kind well, of well, that's of course that is, uh, and anyone listening must 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 know. Very important to stress, actually, as we discuss the politics, that being sick after a bang to the head is a sign of concussion, and concussion should always be checked out. Thank you, Kerry. Um, Lynn is in Haywards Heath. Lynn, what would you like to say? Hello. Hello. Um, this is quite a complicated subject. Is it? I used to be an overseas digital coordinator for a trust, which I ran between five hospitals, and I was the person that had to be called to check on people's um, status as to whether they qualified for free treatment under the NHS. That covers a very wide range, being that to state one thing, yes. I had a child that was brought into the country because her uncle boasted that he could get her free treatment. Yes. She came in from Egypt. They they fortified all the passports without asking any of the See, that's, her that, that's fraud, isn't it, rather than health yes. tourism. But so so but that's without, already covered by the law. But without even checking, different departments in our country started to make a. Um, a £15,000 wheelchair. Her food was costing hundreds of pounds a week, specialist food. Yes, I, I'm just going to pause you, Lynn, because that's fraud. You said that they falsified their documents and their passports. So this isn't agreed, evidence, this without, isn't evidence of what the BMA has voted on. No one at the BMA exactly. has voted to encourage falsification of passports no, and, and, and promote fraud. Of asking people to check, we are now landlords. I'm retired, and we are now landlords. This system has already been set up in the in the NHS service for many years, and it's the government, first of all, that have refused even to put a person qualified in at Gatwick to stop this tourism, and. If I rang... Yes, but I, the, again, I'm a bit confused because the thing you've told me is not health tourism. It's it's international fraud, right. deliberate it's, fraud. It's, it's a criminal act. But I've had people, and they've come into the country illegally, and if I ring the immigration department and tell them that I've got an illegal immigrant, they didn't <laughs> want to know. And, and yet it is you that would be punished if someone came around and established that, that you've rented a house to an illegal immigrant. You'd be the one facing That's criminal right. charges. But this is, this is, this is more pertinent. Yes, but this is the problem, is that they've, they've fed public opinion, and I, I don't want to sound rude, Lynn, but public opinion is inflamed and fostered by stories that like the one you told, which has absolutely nothing to do with the issue under discussion. But when you said £15,000 on a wheelchair, you could feel sort of processed pork popping up and down the country. It's nothing to do with what the BMA has voted on. I completely understand why in your mind you thought it was. So in order, okay. to, in order to feed those feelings of fury and fear, they bring in rules like the ones that you're getting it in the neck over the government's cack-handed attempts to address the public opinion that has been whipped up by irrelevant stories like your £15,000 wheelchair. That's how it works, Lynn. I do think that we should, you know, be responsible for, say, I've got to now take photocopies of a passport and a driving licence. You can fake them, like the Egyptian quick. kid did. But... Yeah, this is the thing. You're we still you're still facing criminal charges for not not spotting that they were fake. That's right. And how do we know they're fake? Because they are so good. Yes. It was only by a fluke I realised that this passport years ago was fake. It's because I made them produce more paperwork. That's not but what you I expected when you became a landlady. <laughs> no, it wasn't. And <laughs> that's the problem. They're asking you to do it. Can I inquire after your age? Would that be incredibly ungallant of me? I'm 70 now. So they, you, no one, when they get cross about a Daily Mail front page, thinks that 70-year-old Lynn in Haywards Heath is going to be the front line of our immigration enforcement agency, going over everything with a magnifying glass and a fine tooth comb. But when you whip up... Go on. That's a bit I'm trying to say. I is, know. Although these jobs are in place, there is no backup to them. And if there was, it would cost more money than it would save, Lynn. No, it yes, wouldn't. Because it would. if the cooperation was there, it would run smoothly, but the cooperation isn't there. Because you do have doctors with their Hippocratic Oath that don't that, that want to treat people 
But this treatment is cost, costing us thousands of pounds. It's a problem and it goes in a circle. Yeah, well, I, I think we're in broad agreement with each other, albeit that your case study is is, is, is my problem. Is, is stories about £15,000 wheelchairs that are nothing to do with health tourism. The story the mail goes for about the woman who came here to give birth to quintuplets, which cost £145,000, is relevant to conversations about um, health tourism. But I, I'm going to cautiously suggest to my beloved listeners that if this was a major problem or indicative of a widespread issue, they wouldn't be digging up a tale from 2010. They'd have examples from last week, last month, last year, or 2018, or 2017, or 2016, or 2015, or 2014, or 2013, or 2012, or 2011. I think I could even remember her name. I think her first name was Bimbo, because it, it, it rather sticks in the memory. That, that's how common these stories are. I can remember the name of the case study from a decade ago. Oh, Lord, Mar Francois on the telly. Ah, look at his little pudding face. What's he talking about? Gat 24, I presume, um, but the subtitles aren't on, so I can't, I can't quite tell. Liam Fox, of all people, has published a document today explaining why this Article 24 um, guff is guff. But that's, that's where we are now. Liam Fox, no doubt, will be described as a traitor soon. 10.50 is the time. We may wade back into Brexit-flavoured waters after 11 o'clock. Um, uh, you, of course, are welcome to join me. Although I would understand if a degree of fatigue had set in. We're talking about the uh, uh, ten-year-old tale that the Daily Mail have used to inflame and infuriate you about the idea of foreigners coming over here, getting treated on our NHS and refusing to pay their bills. Um, a practice that is so negligible in the great scheme of things that doctors have themselves just voted uh, <laughs> to abolish the system of checks and balances put in place to address the problem. Partly, I presume... Because there is a principle at the very heart of this that does actually merit attention and probably action of some sort, depending on the scale of the problem. Um, we've got an exact figure on, on how big a problem this is. It's somewhere between 200 million and 2 billion pounds. <laughs> they actually used the word exact in the mail today. The exact figure is between 200 million. I don't know what exact says in your dictionary, but it's, it's exactly between 200 million and 2 billion pounds. Um, but, of course, it, these schemes are not designed to actually achieve anything. They're designed to, to, to make it look as if politicians are feeding the flames that have been whipped up by xenophobic exaggerations and anti-immigration rhetoric. And, I, I, I mean, today is one of those lovely days, actually, because we haven't had to do this for a while, where you don't even have to tug the thread, really. You just have to touch it. It's like a house of cards, this kind of journalism. It looks like a, a, you know, a sturdy building, but it's, it's actually just cards, very gently balanced against each other. You don't even have to touch it. You can just go like this. Keith, will this work? You can just go like this. <sighs> can people tell what I'm doing? So you don't even have to tug a thread on this or, or, or give it a slap at the bottom or, or, or pull out one brick so the whole thing collapses or, or, or push one domino so the whole lot topple. You just have to go like this. <sighs> just have to blow. The whole thing falls down. You can leave it to me to huff and to puff. 10.52 is the time. Uh, Lee is in Exeter. Lee, what would you like to say? Hello, good morning to you, James. Hello, I'm Lee. first time caller. Um, I, I only caught uh, some of the conversation uh, about this um, uh, uh, health tourism um, on, my, on my drive back. Um, my, my wife's a Filipino. Uh, she arrived in this country 2014 on, on a spousal visa. Uh, the uh, uh, border agency <coughs> fleece us for thousands of pounds every time we uh, renew her um, further leave to remain uh, visas. And as part of that process, James, we have to pay a um, NHS surcharge of £500. Now, we can't even extend my wife's visa uh, until we get past that online application page of paying for the extra £500. So the, 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 the infrastructure is already there, isn't it? No, because she's, she's, she's paying in advance. She's not paying for treatment received. It's a completely different principle. Well, 
you, you that's like that, a form of health insurance, actually. And my, my big fear, Lee, is that the, the reason why certain types of right-wing politicians get behind these sort of stories is it does actually do the groundwork for putting up at the taxpayer's expense, putting these systems in place that would make moving to uh, a, a, an insurance-based system that, of course, people like Nigel Farage have, have gone on the record saying that they want. It would make it a hell of a lot easier, and all of the paperwork and the bureaucracy would have already been paid for by you and me and, of course, your, your wife. But the, if the infrastructure is there... No, no, but the infrastructure the right isn't there to charge people for treatment received. The infrastructure is there to charge people who have spousal visas in advance for treatment that they may need. But if the infrastructure is there for spousal visas, then anyone coming to this country from outside the European Union, uh, that, that the infrastructure must be there for them And to, if they're on uh, a spousal visa, the they, they, they will be charged as, as, as you are. Does your wife work? Yes, she does, well, yeah. Well, then she's also paying her national insurance, so there's an injustice there, I think, you could make, but it's not relevant to the conversation about whether or not doctors and nurses should be checking her immigration status every time she goes to a hospital, which is what the BMA well, have voted to stop. Well, if, if she, the, the, my point is this. If she hadn't have paid for that uh, NHS uh, 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 surcharge, yes, she, she would have been kicked out of the country. So... You know, if, and if she had been uh, forced yes, but, to... But, but uh, all of this is true. Of all, all of this yeah. is true. None of it is relevant to the conversation we've been having well, all morning. It, 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 it's relevant. In well, how do you know? Because you haven't been what, listening to it. Well, well, it, what's right and what's wrong is uh, what's relevant. No, you, I, I, understand so, your the I understand your sense of injustice, that your wife has to pay £500 as an NHS surcharge in advance of any treatment she may receive. But it's not a valid contribution to a conversation about doctors and nurses being charged with establishing the immigration, actually more, re more relevantly, the residency status of every single patient that crosses the threshold of a hospital. I mean, I'm not cross with you, and I, I, I don't want to embarrass you, but as a general rule, if you begin a call by saying, I haven't really been listening to the conversation, um, but I think I've got a really powerful point to make, it, 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 it demands an awful lot of confidence to do that, and, and I don't think you should feel bad about the fact that you didn't. Uh, Emma is in Birmingham. Emma, what would you like to say? Oh, hi there. Uh, hi, James. It's first time caller. You're very welcome. Have you been listening to the conversation, Emma? There's a slight prerequisite um, to making a valuable and valid contribution. Yes, oh, the, okay. the vast Carry majority on. of it. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I, I definitely think with uh, when it comes to healthcare professionals, um, I mean, there's a great organisation called Docs Not Cops um, that talks about oh, obviously that? having to Docs check... Not Cops. Uh, Docs, docs, not cops. Yeah, well, that they cuts to the heart um, of it, don't want to be too. Um, and patients, not passports, is one of their hashtags. So check them out. Um, and I know that they are. I've met quite a few of them. And um, from my own background, I've worked with asylum seekers and refugees for about the last fifteen years. Um, and this charging uh, element um, it totally and utterly affects those people who are refugees and asylum seekers who actually aren't chargeable under the regulations, but they're very, very complicated. So if you're, for example, a asylum seeker or a refugee, you might know people that have been charged and therefore that will deter you from uh, accessing health care. If, I mean, if, if we were feeling very conspiratorial, we could suggest that that was the plan. But we're not, mm. so we won't. Well, um, I, you could say it's part of the hostile environment, but um, I've, 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 I've met overseas visitors managers who are the people in the hospitals that um, actually check and send out the bills. And I'll tell you what else we could say if we were feeling conspiratorial, Emma. We could say that if, if you'd run a health service, or indeed a government, that had inflicted huge cuts and pay freezes on the NHS, and as a result of that, the service that many patients received felt as if it had deteriorated or diminished over the last, ooh, nine years, then... Suggesting that it's all the fault of foreigners turning up and getting stuff for free would be an absolute <laughs> jackpot, wouldn't it? Well, you could say that, yeah. Well, but we wouldn't, because, <laughs> uh, you know, we wouldn't be able to prove it. I think that, but I just wanted to also make a point, and, and that I think one of the reasons that the BMA have, have come out and they have said that um, charging does affect um, and deter, one, it does deter people from going into healthcare anyway, whether they're chargeable or not. Um, I've seen cases uh, where, for example, with domestic violence, there was a woman who got a regular status, okay, she came on a spousal visa, she was under, um, well, it was a case that was given to me, um, and uh, she had suffered domestic violence, quite considerable, horrendous domestic violence. 
she was then charged for the um, pregnancy that, uh, not the pregnancy, sorry, the childbirth um, uh, care that she had, but not for the mental health care that she had um, was given for the domestic violence. Mm. So they oh. picked and choose between which they would charge and which they wouldn't. If, so if we case- could see, if we could crunch the numbers properly, I could see, yeah. I could see a political or an economic debate being had and and if you could say we can it would cost this to fix and it would save that but it's between 200 million and 2 billion and it's conservative mp's queuing up to talk about public opinion it's it's actually the definition of brexit britain fact free feeling heavy anti foreigner scaremongering and and you're at the sharp end of it costs more money because once you deter people so for example one part no, of the charge no way thing going. is we're going to run out of time but, but if i don't go um, immediately that i need help then when i do actually present in, in need of help i'm going to be costing a hell of a lot more than i would have done if i'd gone in the first place yeah. and if it's non-urgent care they can withhold it unless you pay up front so therefore you end up going when it's really really important i, I well of course you do uh, and leaving it and, and in fact you do that whether it's a financial issue or not so it's, it's a peculiarly male condition sometimes to put off going to the doctor until in some cases it's, it's too late or it's become a much more urgent problem and there it is again picked apart like a like a chicken carcass on a summer picnic until all that's left is the bones and guess what it's nothing to be angry or scared about